Hello and welcome to this Microtask to Shorts video in which we'll be looking at the flash option settings in the STM32F processors. For this discussion and practical demonstration I'm using the Microtask project which includes a set flash option routine for setting the new values. Here I've connected a terminal emulator to my Nucleo board and I'm going to let the board start up. In the Microtasker project we always have a command line menu which allows me to do memory access. For example I can look at the registers which are responsible for the options. I do memory display 40023C00. I display them as long words and I know that there are seven registers in this processor. Here we can see the memory map of the flash registers where we see the flash option setting in this register here. Some of the larger chips have also a second register which controls additional protection on flash sectors. We're going to be concentrating on the standard option register which contains options for protecting certain sections in the flash and the read protection level here as well. There are some other settings here which we are not going to discuss because the basic behavior is pretty similar. So I'm going back to this board we can see the initial settings. These two registers here correspond to the values read from these two here. At the moment we have no flash protection set up so I'm going to show you how the flash protection can be work by modifying this on the fly. What I have is a command which allows me to change this option setting. So I'm going to do this by saying F option and I'm going to set the value FBF AAE9. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change one of the flash protection bits and we're going to see what happens. First of all watch what happens when I execute this command there. You notice that it took us about 0 0.2, 0 0.3 seconds to execute. That's because each time we change these values here we have to commit them to flash also. So now let's take a look at the operation in flash. I have the possibility to uh, look at some of the internal flash by using storage display. Now I'm going to look at the area 804 I'm just going to look at a few bytes there. As we can see at the moment this area is blank. It's got FFs in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my storage modify command and write a bit of data into this area. I'm going to write one long word with this pattern. Now what happens here is we saw that the flash failed or the rather the writing failed. That's because I just set protection on this block. So we're going to repeat it but with a block previous to it in memory. So we're going to say memory display or rather storage display 802 one, two, three, four. just look at a few bytes in there and we see that we have some data in there already. So I'm just going to do a little modification, storage modification 802 one, two, three, address 4. I'm going to write in another long word. I'm going to put this in there. Now it said the write was OK so let's look what happened. And we see that yes it did work and what I can do also is to do a storage erase 802 just one block takes a second or so to delete a block of memory and then let's have a look to verify that it's really blank and it is. But of course we couldn't do the same on the block which I just protected. So now we can take a look at the flash read protection. Here we double check the settings that we have at the moment. <clears throat> now I'm going to try to set the read protection level from level 0 as it is at the moment. That is with a value AA here to level 2. So I'm going to type F option FFF. Also I'm going to remove the flash protection that I had before. Let's put a 0, 0 any value apart from CC we can use to set to level 1 E9 and there we execute. Let's see what happens. Now it looks as though it's hung the board and the board is actually made a reset as well. 
Now what I've found is that uh, to get this thing up and running again I have to recycle the power. So I'm going to do that now. There we've recycled the power and the board has restarted again and I can see that it's running. So let's have a check what these settings are at the moment. There we are. So uh, the command did work. It needed the power cycle to get it operational again, but now we should have level 1 flash reprotection. So to verify this, I'm using the debugger. Here I have the debugger connected, and I've paused the debugger, and what I can see is that I can also read these register settings. However, if I try to read anything from the internal flash, there's no access. So this is verifying, proving to me that we have read protection set up on the flash. So what we're going to do now is to try to get back to level zero of uh, read protection. To do that, I'm going to command again the F option with the value FFF AA for the level zero protection E9. And let's see what happens. I'm executing the command. And again, the board hangs. Now it's worth explaining exactly what is happening now. When the level of protection is moved from level 1 to level 0, this causes the chip to do an automatic mass erase of the flash. This is a secure technique so that when you move back from this secured mode, you don't leave your flash opened um, for viewing by other people. So the erasure itself takes about 25 to 30 seconds to complete. Now the erasure starts when the command sets the start bit and we recognize that it's finished when the status registers busy bit is set back to zero. However, there's a bit of a complication in the driver. I'll show you it here. When this sequence is performed, that means we move down a level, we have to run our code in RAM. The reason is because if we wait on this busy loop and we're operating in flash, then we cannot operate correctly because the flash will be erased, our program will be destroyed as we're using it. So what we have to do is we have to run this code in RAM, so I have this RAM routine doing the work for us, and uh, also, because it's quite a long period, we have to re-trigger the watchdog if we want it to complete correctly. Otherwise, the watchdog will probably fire before the flash has been erased, um, which means that we don't really know what's going on anymore. So what I've done now is I've reconnected the debugger to the board, and we can verify that we have correctly removed the uh, level 1 uh, read protection and also the debugger can now again read from the internal flash. Of course the code has been deleted so we need to reload the code to the board so that it can operate again. There is one last very important point which I'd like to um, talk about and that is the level 2 of protection. Uh, to set level 2 of protection we need to put the value C into this part of the register here. However, you have to be very careful about this because level 2 mode will stick. You cannot get back to a low level after you've set this. And in this mode, you cannot use the uh, debugger anymore. You cannot load code to the board using debuggers. You need a bootloader installed, which means effectively you must have already completed your product development, and this is something which you do for production devices to protect them. Now, if I look at the microtasker routine, what we can see as well is that we um, we do check for the case of the caller trying to uh, put the device to level two, and it will be blocked. It means we will not change the level if this is detected unless the user has explicitly um, set this to find to say I do want to allow uh, securing the debug access because it's a very critical thing we don't want it to be done when you don't want it to be done if you know what I mean. 
So thank you very much for watching this video and good luck with your own work with Microtasker on the STM32 devices.